My name is Jackie McKean. Welcome to the online service of the Lutheran Church of Reconciliation. I have been a member of this church for over 25 years. We were invited by a past member of the church and we felt extremely at home the minute we walked through the doors. In getting to know people in the church, I joined the handbell choir. We started working with Mother Hubbard's Cupboard and eventually my mother and I headed up the Mother Hubbard's Cupboard for our church. In doing that, we have met so many people, helped do so many community things, and just really enjoyed our time and still enjoy our time at our church. So I hope you enjoy this online service and please watch as many and maybe someday come join us at, live at our church and have a blessed day. Good morning, sons and daughters of God. Welcome as we gather today for worship, not only here in this room, in this space, but also online. And we welcome all of you who are watching us from home or from wherever you might be seeing us today. Thank you for tuning in to our live stream worship. And thank you for joining us today. You know, we come to church on Sunday and we hear an awful lot of talk about faith and hopefully we hear how that faith applies to our life. But sometimes it's a, a little hard for us to know how to do both, how to live everyday life and how to have an everyday faith. Living out what we believe can sometimes be a little tricky. So today we hear both Jesus and the writer to the letter of James, or the writer of the letter of James, uh, talk about what it means to live an everyday life and an everyday faith. And so we are glad that we have this instruction, this encouragement, and this inspiration. So now please stand as you are able as we begin together with our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God of justice and righteousness, your call beckons to us to live faithful lives to turn from wickedness, to walk in your ways. Yet it is so easy to turn aside, to speak a thoughtless word, to ignore those in need, to strike out in anger, to forget your ways. We are much better hearers than doers of your word. Forgive us for being more devoted to our own hearts acting on what feels right to us instead of following your instruction. We continue. Here, Lord, we have named our sins. Forgive our honest repentance. Here, Lord, we still have hidden sins. Save us from what we will not acknowledge. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. 
by Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. That you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me. It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Of God, you call me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me? When I call, is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing, it's amazing. I am a friend of God. 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 He calls me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. song is a new song, and yet it goes right along with our theme about how we are to live. And of course, taking the words from Micah, what does the Lord require of you but to act justly and love mercy and walk humbly with our Lord? So um, we're going to be using this for a couple weeks in a row, and um, join when you feel comfortable. To be 
O God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. is from James chapter 1 verses 17 to 27. The letter of James was intended to provide first century Christians with instruction in godly behavior. Here Christians are encouraged to listen carefully and to act on what they hear, especially by caring for those least able to care for themselves. A reading from James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any hearers of the word are not doers, They are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their own doing. 
If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Mark. One day, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples failed to follow the Jewish ritual of hand washing before eating. The Jews, especially the Pharisees, Do not eat until they have poured water over their cupped hands as required by their ancient traditions. Similarly, they don't eat anything from the market until they immerse their hands in water. This is but one of many traditions they have clung to, such as their ceremonial washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of religious law asked him, Why don't your disciples follow our age-old tradition? They eat without first performing the hand-washing ceremony. Jesus replied, You hypocrites! Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For he wrote, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce. For they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. For you ignore God's law and substitute your own tradition. Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. All of you listen, he said, and try to understand. It's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. For from within, out of a person's heart, Comes, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Be seated. In Jesus' name, amen. Like lots of families, our family has tons of pictures that document all kinds of milestones and all kinds of silliness throughout the years. And one picture in particular comes to mind for today. It's the picture that was taken on the day of my baptism at St. John's Lutheran Church in Salisbury, North Carolina. We are all gathered around the font, and my parents are just beaming while they're holding me. 
the first grandchild in my generation. But what brings this picture to mind is my grandfather is leaning out like this so he can be seen from behind my grandmother's hat that was as big as a sombrero. And it makes me remember that back in the day, all women wore hats to church. It's what you did. It was right and proper. And some wore gloves, too. And guys, we're not off the hook either. Men used to wear suits as well. And there was a day, maybe some of you know this, there was a day when, when people would come to worship, the men would sit on one side and the women would sit on the other. I saw a picture of that actually taking place in the church that I served in South Carolina. I wonder which side had the most snoring. Anyway, that's what you did. That was what was right and proper. And there are lots of things that we might today think are a little weird. Uh, things that we don't think are necessary anymore to be faithful. Fact of the matter is, though, there's, there have been times where deciding and determining what was right and proper has caused an awful lot of unpleasantness within the church. I read a story this week about two congregations who were working to merge with one another because they needed each other in order to survive. I mean, it was a good idea for them to come together, only they were having a lot of trouble doing it because they couldn't decide how to pray the Lord's Prayer. One congregation wanted to pray, forgive us our trespasses, and the other congregation wanted to pray, forgive us the wrong we have done. The local newspaper reported that the merger failed because one church went back to its trespasses and the other returned to its wrongs. <laughs> now, we, we might laugh and think that's kind of cute, but... We need to realize how sad that is. And before we discount the, that, that it might seem ridiculous to us, we've got to realize that, that at some point in time, those kinds of things really did matter to people. It was right and proper. It's how you did church. It's how you lived your faith. And it's not new at all. Jesus had to deal with it as well. And today we hear him in discussion, well, really more than discussion, with these religious leaders and teachers of religious law, the Pharisees. And they're, they're discussing dietary regulations and washing rituals. The fact is, the Pharisees and the teachers of religious law, they were trying to apply God's law to everyday living. In fact, that's, that's what the law was meant to do. It was meant to help God's people remember how to live like God's people every day. It was meant to, to have them live in such a way that the nations around them would realize that these were people who lived in a close relationship with God. And so we might say that those religious leaders were encouraging people to be doers of the Word. We heard that just a few minutes ago from the letter of James, where we are encouraged to do what we say we believe. James is a book of doing. Be someone who demonstrates your faith by letting it show on the outside. Don't just be a listener who listens, a thinker who thinks, a talker who talks. Don't just be a believer who believes. 
but be a believer who by what you do and how you live demonstrates what you believe. And you do that all so that the kingdom of God may be built up. So weren't those who were criticizing Jesus doing just that? Weren't they encouraging the people to live out their faith? Well, maybe. Maybe that was the intent, but over time, their traditions, their practices, began to be a little distorted and a little twisted. These folks began to talk about faith becoming a show. What you wore, the length of your prayers, how you washed your utensils and hands, the size of your gifts measured your spirituality. And then I could use that measurement to show how deep your spirituality is. And I could use that then to determine who's in and who's out. Are you good enough for God to love you? And if you're not, then I don't care anything about you either. Now, we read this story in the Bible and we know it's something that happened a long, long time ago. But these religious folks didn't corner the market on this kind of thinking. And sadly, in a lot of ways, it hasn't disappeared. How many subtle ways do we still do the same thing? Send a message to others that if they can't dance to our tune, then we don't really want them around. Because they're not going to fit in anyway if they don't do what we do the way we do it. I wonder... What was it like on that first Sunday when a woman arrived at church without a hat? What kind of ridicule did she have to endure? And did she even come back? In seminary, we would be given case studies about all kinds of situations in, in the congregations, and, and we would argue back and forth about how we were supposed to handle it. We were worried about how to get it right, as if we were trying to defend God. Because we knew if it was done this way, that's exactly the way God would want it done. Many a church fight has broken out over what started with people wanting to do things a certain way because they thought that was the right way to do it. It's so easy for us to, to push people away because we insist that everybody obey the rules, our rules, my opinion becomes your burden. Don't bother to come back if you can't follow them. Because, obviously, you can't be close to God if you don't. But Jesus said, if you want to know how close someone is to God, look at their heart. You can't change the inside by trying to decorate the outside. You can let your sacred cows get in the way of knowing and loving God. 
And one of the main reasons Jesus constantly stayed in trouble with the religious folks of his day was his insistence on challenging those sacred cows. Jesus didn't come down on tradition because he thought it was bad. He was just worried about how it was being used. He wanted to make sure that traditions and rituals did not become a wedge that divides or a weapon that wounds. What he's trying to help us see that what really matters is letting God fill us in such a way that we are changed to become a different kind of person than we would be otherwise. And that by being a new and different person, we would be motivated to let our faith out through the things that we say and do with other people. And for Jesus... You can't substitute one for the other. So doesn't it sound a little bit like James is contradicting what Jesus said? No. Actually, at the heart of it, both Jesus and James are saying exactly the same thing. That heart works on the inside, produces good works on the outside. And both are needed to be faithful. Dr. Will Willimon tells a story that helps us understand how important it is to have both and how easy it is to let one overcome the other. He says he's got a friend who said that God laid it on his heart to have a real concern about racism in America. This man grew up in the South in what he calls an unabashedly and unashamedly racist culture. But because he's a committed Christian, he is determined to do his part to change the attitude of his race, he's white, to change the attitude and actions of his race toward the issue of race. So he helped to organize a committee to work on racial reconciliation in his small South Carolina town. As a lay leader in his church, he got his white congregation to form partnerships with African-American churches where they began to work together on projects and and have honest and loving and deep and passionate discussions about race. He is living out his faith. He is a doer of the word. And yet, he told Willimon about a shocking experience he had when he and his family visited a nearby city. They had gone to a concert and they were walking back to their hotel. And as they approached a street crosswalk, he looked and on the other side were three African-American young men standing there talking and laughing with each other. And as he and his family began to walk across the street, he noticed one of the young men looking at them, and he said instinctively, without a thought of hesitation, he gathered his children more closely to himself. And then the young man called out, Hey, how y'all folks doing? I hope you're enjoying the city. Have a good time tonight. And the man said, by the time my family had reached the other side of the crosswalk, I realized I had just met a white supremacist racist.
heart works produce good works. May God empower us to do both well. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, help us to discern what is good and right and proper and helpful in how we live out our faith in community with others. Forgive us for judging ourselves or others with the wrong measuring stick. And give us courage to do both heart work and good works. To build up your kingdom for the sake of all the people you love. In Jesus' name. Please stand, if you are able, for the prayers of our church. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. The prayers in the bulletin were written before the tragic bombing that took place in Kabul, Afghanistan, this week. So we offer this prayer instead. Almighty and merciful God, we mourn the tragedy of senseless violence and death that we have seen in Afghanistan. Our hearts break over those killed and wounded by those who seek to destroy life and dignity. We are especially saddened by those who gave their lives trying to help others flee to safety and freedom, our own soldiers and Marines. Comfort their families and the families of all who were needlessly killed. Bring an end to hatred and division that causes this kind of violence. Enable all people to see themselves and others as your children, worthy of love and respect and dignity. Bless all who work to bring relief to those who remain behind a curtain of oppression and those who offer assistance to refugees. Guide us all to work for the day 
when all nations will rejoice in your kingdom of justice and peace. In your great mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, that it is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with pastors, deacons, and leaders who echo your expansive and generous welcome. In your great mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in need, Support and encourage those who are unemployed, underemployed, or experiencing poverty. Bring food, shelter, clothes, and stability for daily life. Sustain those dealing with grief, loss, and illness, especially those we name to you now. Susan Bayman, Jesse Brock, John Daly, Gay Green, Alberta Holden, Meryl Holden, Paul Letts, Mary Lou Schofield, Roger Strong, Bill Sutton, Ron Wagner, and those on our lips and in our hearts. In your great mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation especially those beginning a new school year. Empower teachers and school administrators. Guide students in their learning and development. Accompany parents, foster parents, and caregivers who provide encouragement and love. Keep them safe as they learn and work together. In your great mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for ourselves. Keep us faithful in troubled times and hear us as we offer our personal prayers of thanksgiving and lament. In your great mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. For those of you watching online, we offer you our peace, extend Christ's peace to you, and we receive the peace back from you. May we greet one another with the sign of Christ's peace. For those of you who are worshiping with us online, we welcome you to share in this meal of thanksgiving, forgiveness, and new life. So please prepare your bread and cup and join us as we celebrate Christ's Supper together. With the bread, we invite you to uh, share it with the words, the body of Christ given for you, and with the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. Now please stand as you are able. Living a life of faith is always difficult, and we need all of the help and resources that we can get. And so God gives to us a blessing to take with us, to feed us, to nourish us with the bread of life. And Jesus did just that with his disciples, and so he does that with us. We remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for them to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set this table with more than enough for all. Come and be fed. We will commune the piano side first today. Please be seated.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to show the love to the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Again, we welcome you to worship both here in this place and online. And we thank you for taking the time to be with us and to share this time with God who strengthens you for your daily living. We are going to be able to live out some of that daily living on the 12th of September as we uh, work together for God's work our hands. We continue to remind you because if you're like me, you forget. Somebody told me this morning, if I could only remember when September the 12th is. Well, it's a Sunday. It's coming up. And in your bulletin, you have lots of opportunities to uh, participate. And we encourage you to do so uh, as, as the days approach for that special day. We, are also, we also have some good news and some bad news. <laughs> the good news is... We're expanding our handbell choir. We've got lots of folks who are beginning to play in our handbell choir. The bad news, or really the sad news, not bad, just sad, we don't have enough bells for them. And so we are starting a campaign called Buy a Bell. There's been some seed money given to start expanding our, uh, num the number of bells. Like, is it another octave? Yes. We're gonna get another octave of bells, and that would give us enough uh, instruments that everybody who plays has a chance to play more than one bell. I would really feel bad if I had only one little tinkle bell to play every, every 16 measures or so. Uh, so it'd be great to have people participating and we can do that with uh, an expanded octave of bells. So uh, think about that. Um, there's ways uh, you'll be getting instructions on how to be a part of that uh, expansion uh, by a bell campaign here at Reconciliation. Now please, hear this assurance of grace. Stand as you're able. God has always loved you. God loves you now and God will love you forever. This is good news because it strengthens us. It encourages us. It feeds us and enables us to be doers of the word, to change the inside so that we can bear fruit on the outside. So we go trusting that this same God will continue to bless us and keep us, that God's face will continue to shine on us with grace and mercy, and that God will continue to look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. <laughs>
in peace. Be doers of the word. Thanks be to God.